Hi everyone, Morgan Sir here, Midway Bible Camp Chapel video. I'm going to tell you uh, this uh, true story from the Bible about how, uh, well, the God God kind of got sick up, sick and fed up, fed up and sick and tired of, yeah, something like that, of uh, of all the sin in the world after God made the world. And uh, I'm, at the same time, I'm going to talk to you about how do we reach out to our family with with God's love. Uh, remember the Bible verse uh, for for this week is Matthew chapter 28 verses 19 to 20 and it talks about how Jesus has power over uh, in heaven and on earth and also he tells us as people who choose to follow him to go and make disciples followers of him um, teaching teaching them everything that he's he's uh, taught us and he also tells us that he's with us always in those Bible verses. And so that's a, just a good reminder. I'm going to focus on the story of Noah. And it's an interesting story because, um, well, you'll hear it all. But when it comes down to it, Noah and his family, his three sons and their wives and his own wife, together they work on a project together. And it is in working together and um, following God together that uh, we can grow strong together as a family. Uh, that's one of the uh, the main ways we can do that. So anyways, I'm going to flip this around and I'm going to show you some videos. Um, my kids and I, we worked on some Lego, Lego um, telling the story as well. So I'm going to mix in some pictures from a book uh, that just tells that story. Uh, again, this is in, in the book of Genesis, so check that out if you've got a Bible at home. If not, uh, send us a message, an email or whatever. Uh, email midwaybiblecamp at gmail.com or message us on Facebook and uh, we'll try and get you one one way or another. Anyways, you have a great, uh, great day and uh, here is the story of Noah. Did you ever wonder how do you tell your family about Jesus when the world seems full, so full of wickedness and evil where hearts are broken? Where people are being mean and bullying all the time. When people seem to just do whatever they want to do, even if it hurts other people. Well, this is the story of Noah and how he led his family to follow God. After Adam and Eve were kicked out of the Garden of Eden, the world filled up and people spread out and made cities. The Bible tells us that the heart of man was turned towards evil continually. They stopped worshiping God, worshiped idols, and there was violence of all kinds. People still enjoyed the world, and there was, for a time, some people were following God, and then some things, but really bad, started to happen. Start oh, what do we see here? Bang! People would die. Oh no, he's stealing all that stuff. Meanwhile, in the city. Hey, little servant. Don't you dare spill any water again on my floor. So, come here, you! Yes. Bang! He's yeah, he's dead. So much violence and witness. But there was one man was doing what's right. Noah. And God told him to do something very special. Now, we don't know what he looked like. We don't know if he had really dark skin or lighter brown skin or pale skin. We don't know what his family looked like. We do know that Noah, Noah was one of our last common ancestors for every person in the world. And so from his descendants, we all come. Yes. Noah was faithful to God. He did what was right, not in his own eyes, but in God's eyes. Him and his wife. And he, God told him to build a boat. Which was crazy. But he did. He obeyed. And so, the ark was a huge project. And if you're seeing the Lego there, we were doing our best. But look at this picture. You can even see here. Uh, a mammoth or an elephant kind creature and see how big that ark would have had to be it had to be huge and the bible tells us very clearly how big it was Noah built the ark it pr likely took him a long time his three sons Shem, Ham and Japheth likely helped along with 
Noah's wife and their wives. What are you guys building? The ark. Oh, yes. Do you think people would have laughed at Noah? Yeah. Probably. We don't know if Noah had white hair or what he looked like exactly. But we know that he obeyed God and built the ark. And he used tools to do that. It reminds us that even though we need to use tools to build things, God doesn't. God created the world and he just spoke it into existence. And yet he gave us the intelligence to figure out how to use these different tools. And we can use tools to remind each other about how we can build our lives. Jesus tells a story of uh, a wise and a foolish builder, one who builds his life, his house, on a solid ground and one who builds it on the sand. And when the storms of life come, Noah, his wife, his sons, Japheth with his wife, Ham with his wife, and uh, Shem with his wife worked on building this ark. We don't know if they had more people helping them, but God told them to build a boat because he was going to flood the entire world. And in the flood, in the flood, all the trees and all the land and all the people and all the animals that were not in the ark, everybody on the ark would be saved. The Bible tells us that Noah was a preacher of righteousness. That he, essentially that he told everyone to follow God, to follow follow their creator. He sent two of every creature and seven of some to be on the ark. Every animal, every kind of animal that God had made to protect them. Now obviously we don't have enough Lego here to finish our whole ark, but we tried to build the three levels. God told Noah how big to build it with three levels and a window on top. And it was to be safe when the waves and the wind would get blowing. When the, what would happen? Would they be safe inside? Yeah. Oh, yes. And we find in the New Testament a story about Jesus. How he was sleeping in a boat. And in the boat, his disciples, the people following him, they were afraid. And they woke up and said, Oh, oh, Jesus, teacher, teacher, help us, help us, help us, we're going to drown. But Jesus said, Don't be afraid. And he calmed the seas. And there was only one door on this ark. Now, we haven't built one door because we didn't really get that far yet. But that one door was the only way into the ark. And did you think that Noah, do you think that Noah was inviting people to come onto the ark? Mm-hmm. You think so? Yeah. Did anybody listen? No. 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 And right now, who's inviting people uh, to follow Jesus? Me. Everybody who follows Jesus. So they can be saved just like these apes. And look, there's some funny red monkeys with the ogapi. They're feeding them some carrots. Got some parrots and rabbits down there. Some pigs of different varieties. You can see there's still some stuff they're building. So we thought maybe you could have fun playing a Bible story too. Uh, We'll tell you the rest of the story. God actually closed the door of the ark. And that reminds us that Jesus is the door to our safety now. The door to our salvation. Hope you've enjoyed our Lego arc. Whoa, bumping against the wall. Even an eagle, a Migasu, flying in to be saved from the flood that would come to cover the whole world. He can't fly because he has his wings, and then he can fly in the house. <laughs> As they do for every person in this whole world, difficulties come. When the storms of life come, then the people who build their life on something solid and true, well, then... Their life is is firm. Their faith is secure. And those who built their life on a lie or on something that is like sand, it gets washed away. Noah, uh, the Bible tells us, was a preacher of righteousness. He told people, follow God. People probably laughed at him and made fun of him. Eh, what's that Noah guy doing building a boat? Way out. Maybe his family would sit around the fire and talk about how God was working in their lives. How God gave them patience uh, with people who are doing evil things, mean things. Maybe even people tried destroying their hard work on the ark. We don't know. But this is one of the ways we can tell our families about Jesus. By sitting around and telling the stories, the true stories from the Bible about Jesus. We can also do it by living our life in a righteous way, a good way. When God told Noah to build the ark, he told him to build it and leave the door open. And this reminds us 
that there was one door into the ark, one way, and and we I believe that Noah was inviting people, come, turn away from your wicked ways, believe in God, and come to into the ark through this one door. It reminds us that Jesus is the one door through which we can be saved if we just turn to Him and follow Him. And then one day, God sent the animals, two by two, different creatures, all sent to the ark. Can you imagine seeing all those animals coming, two by two and seven of some? How'd the animals get there? We don't know. Maybe God spoke right to their hearts, or maybe He sent angels. You can see in this picture, you can see it in this one. You can see the same animals are there, but you can't see the angel. And many times there's God sends these messengers of his to guide us, to guard us, to teach us. And we may not see there. Maybe people got sick and tired of Noah talking about God and what's good. Perhaps they got angry. And near the end, perhaps they came with fiery torches to destroy the ark. We don't know exactly. But we do know that it wasn't Noah who closed the door in the ark. God said, get into the ark. And then God closed the door. I often think of the ark as this little toy you play in the tub. But the ark was humongous. Huge. It had to keep, take two animals of every kind inside of it. Can you imagine all the sounds? <coughs> 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 Lots of animals, lots of noises maybe. Ooh, birds. I think there's birds way up there, lots of birds. We can only imagine what it would be like for Noah with his wife and his sons and their wives as he talked to them and said, we have to trust God. We have to trust God even when it felt like everything, their whole world was being destroyed. They had to just trust God. Even when people were saying, ah, those guys are crazy. They had to just trust God and get on the ark, do all that work. And that's what we need to do with our family and friends to encourage each person to follow God, to follow our Creator, and to be the man and woman that He's designed us to be. And trust that He will save us, that He will show us the the great deep burst open and rain started coming down. You can imagine if there's fountains breaking, maybe there's volcanoes too. The whole thing is a big mess everything's being destroyed that did not follow the creator follow God you can imagine it would have been animals dying and people and it would have been very sad very wet and some people say well why would God be so mean well God invited everyone to follow him just like he invites every person in the world to follow him right now we can follow life and love and beauty walk away from God and if we walk away from God then there's no safety, there's no hope. God made us and loves us. And He makes a way for us to be saved. And we can share that with our loved ones. One day Noah woke up and the rain had stopped. The sun was coming through the top windows. Maybe the animals were already wondering, what's going on? It's different. You see, they'd been in, the, in there for almost a year by the time they got off the ark. And over 40, day, well, 40 days and 40 nights of rain and just crazy. In this picture, you can see Noah's family sitting around the table. And this is a great place for us to share about what God is doing in our lives at the table with our family. Just sharing. You can see these guys just talking here. Others sharing. Pray together. Meet together and talk about God. Maybe read the Bible together. In the end, the ark landed on dry land. Noah and his family came out. And they had to face a very different world. A world where their friends were gone, where everything they knew was gone, and yet they were resilient people. They loved God and followed Him. And they are, their, they are our ancestors, the ancestors of every person in the world. The animals came out of the ark, probably excited to get on dry land or wet, slightly wet land. The family praised God. You can see a rainbow in the sky. And every time we see a rainbow in the sky, we're reminded that God, that God promised to never flood the world again the whole world, and they sacrificed an animal. They sacrificed to recognize that God is their creator and provider. 